Hello, good evening everybody. Happy Sunday to you all. Uh, I'm Jay Poe, I'm the owner and artist of The Purple Posy. I'm a content creator for Dixie Bell and I am uh, a business coach and a mentor for my private membership group. Hey everybody, welcome. Uh, happy Sunday. Uh, hey there Barb. Hey, hey Dixie Bell. So welcome to Dixie Bell's page. I'm here tonight, I'm gonna paint for you guys with a plethora of Dixie Bell's beautiful paint colors. I'm gonna do a little blending for you guys, a little of my boho blending on this buffet we got back here. Hey there, hey from Australia. I'm in Texas, I'm in West Texas. Hey Michigan. I'm gonna show you guys real quick what I've done and where we're going. So if you see over here, I've started on this side over here. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, six-ish colors over here. And this is what we're gonna do tonight, okay? I'm gonna show you guys how I got that look over there on this little buffet. Hey, from Alabama. Uh, so I'll just go over real quickly what colors we're gonna be using. I'm trying to check to make sure the light's gonna be okay. I've got big sliding glass doors in my studio and I don't even know if I'm gonna need my, my, light, my lighting kit. Don't even know. Um, I did list the products there for you guys. There's a little pinned comment there for you guys. Uh, we're gonna be using Rusty Nail, Honky Tonk Red, Cobalt Blue, Peacock, Amethyst, and some Daisy. And there is a link. You guys can use that link. You can order these products um, or find a retailer. And if you don't have a retailer and you use that link, it sure helps my small business. And I appreciate you so much. Hey there, Kathy from Tennessee. Um, so we will just get started and I won't waste you guys time because I can smell dinner cooking and it sure smells good. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our little our little flat mini. These are my go-to brushes, flat mini. And I'm just gonna slightly wet it down. Usually when I blend, I use straight water. Today I'm using vinegar water. This is a Mr. Bottle that Dixie Bell sells. Um, last time I looked, they were out of stock. You might check again. I don't know, they may be in stock again. I know the brushes were out of stock for quite some time and they were in stock. So guys, use that link. Go check if you've been waiting on brushes, go check and if they're in stock, get you some now. Get you some now. Um, or check if you got a retail retailer. So uh, I do light, lightly mist my brush before we go in. So I've decided I'm gonna go ahead and paint with the hardware on this piece. I went to Pinterest for some inspiration, for some color inspiration and I found a picture. I found a picture. I printed it so I can show you guys. Um, this is kind of my color inspiration. Some reds and, and turquoises and blues and yellows. I don't know how well y'all can see that. But this was just my color inspiration, my color palette that I kind of ran with. And so I did get a, a base coat here. This is Rusty Nail and Peacock. And we're just, and I wanted to get that on so we can get to the fun stuff tonight. The top, I sanded down and I'm fairly certain I'm going to stain it. Well, I was going to use the no paint gel stain, but now I'm looking over there at the temptress thinking I might, I might use the uh, Voodoo gel stain. I don't know. I don't even know. Okay. So we're going to go in and we're going to have some fun with the colors tonight. We've got, look at this rainbow of colors, guys. Look at that rainbow of colors. Huh? How fun is that? Bring you guys up. Hey there from Austin, fellow Texan. Uh, I'm gonna get my other red ready. So I know I'll get some questions. My vinegar mix that I use is pretty potent. I use a 50-50 mix um, on my vinegar. So half white distilled wa uh, vinegar mixed with water is what I use <clears throat> for my vinegar and the reason I'm using vinegar water for this particular piece is because I want a very rustic super boho look and so when I put this paint on and I'm kind of done blending and doing what I want it to do I'm gonna lightly mist my little section and let that vinegar water sit on it 
And if it drips, it drips. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I don't care. I'm gonna let it do its thing. So the vinegar water, what it does is it kind of pulls that paint and separates, and it just kind of it it just kind of separates and gives it like a spider web type look. Um, it'll encourage the dripping and kind of a distress type look. I'm gonna keep this wet. We're gonna blend in a little bit of honky tonk red. It's very, very subtle, but it looks oh so cool when it's when you can see it up close. And when we're done, yeah, I got my heat gun. When we're done, I'll bring you guys in close and you can see what we've done. All right, so now I've got this much honky tonk red on the tips of my brush. Okay, tips of my brush. I'm gonna I'm gonna lightly spritz. And I'm just going to, I'm going to throw it on there. I'm not even being picky. I'm just going to throw it on there. Wherever it goes, it goes. I don't even care if it matches the other side or not. So what's gonna happen when I spray this vinegar, you're gonna see when it separates, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna mist it. Just a tad. Now I'm not gonna, it's not saturated, but it's misted. I'm gonna spread that out a little bit right there. And I'm gonna set and let it do its thing. The use of the vinegar water after you're done. Wait. You use the vinegar water after you're done or are you I'm using vinegar water now okay so I've sprayed that there's gonna be some spots where it drips just a tiny bit there's gonna be some spots where it separates I'm just gonna let it do its thing and we're gonna come down here and work on this little section right here while it kind of dries and drips and does whatever it wants to do I'm just gonna let it do what it wants to do I don't care I don't have a particular preference on what I want it to do I just want it to do something I'm gonna let the furniture do what it wants to do. The vinegar is just just another like tool in your tool belt. Or a glob of paint right there. The vinegar vinegar water is just another tool in your tool belt you guys can use and play with when you're doing some projects. Um, just play with it. It does all kinds of cool things. One thing that you can do with the vinegar water that I've done before that's really kind of cool to give it even more of um, kind of like a spider web type effect is after you've painted and sealed if you want kind of a simple simpler type of look paint and seal your piece I've done this um, I've painted it red I've sealed it Nope, I did it backwards. I painted it turquoise. I sealed it. <clears throat> then I went over it with a really, really bright red. And then I just saturated the entire thing with vinegar water. And, it, and just let it drip and separate and do all kinds of cool things. It looked so stinking cool, y'all. It looked so stinking cool. So while I'm doing this, I'm going to keep misting because I want to keep my paint wet because we're going to add in a little bit of honky tonk. I'm back to rusty nail now. I'm working kind of fast because we've got to keep the paint wet as we go. So this is still rusty nail. I'm going to come down here. I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do. I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing. Nope, I'm going to bring it down. Sorry about that. Water and vinegar ratio is 50-50. And it's just white distilled um, vinegar. Just 50-50. I always tell um, when I'm live, 
when you're blending, you have to have wet paint, and if you're not comfortable painting your, or spraying your piece with your water bottle, your mister bottle, whatever kind of bottle you're using, um, spraying your paintbrush is always an option. You can always do that, uh, which is what I just did. If you're wondering why, it's because I don't want to get too much vinegar water up there to where it pools, like puddles up in an area, and creates a little problem, and drips down on the a dry section later, which might be a, you know, a happy accident, but uh, I just don't think I want that. All right, so I'm going to do, just like I did up there, just I'm dipping into the lid of my jar, and I've got this much Honky Tonk Red. Do you use a different brush for each color? No, so with my reds, I'm not switching brushes. When I come in and do my blues, well, actually, I will switch because I'm going to use a, ch a chip brush here in a little bit. Usually when I'm blending, I do not switch brushes at all. No. It, it, most of the time, 99% of the time, I do not. Um, and all I did to prep this piece was um, cleaned it really well with white lightning and then rinsed it with, with the vinegar water. Uh, so here, I'm doing like I did up there. I'm just slapping, slapping the Honky Tonk Red on just, just randomly. Letting it do whatever. And this is just kind of, it's, it's a very, very subtle difference in the reds. It's not something that you can really see unless you really, really look. Just a little bit of. I'm just going back and forth. So you go back and forth when you're blending until you get kind of your colors where you want to. Make sure you keep your paint wet. Now this is this is pulling right here. The paint is actually pulling back a little bit. I think I let it get too dry. I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let I'm gonna work with that because this is kind of a um a rustic type of look i'm gonna i'm gonna play with that so i'm gonna mist this just like i did the the drawer up here and let it do its thing and then we're gonna move to the inside what does the vinegar water do so the vinegar water will um it kind of reacts with the paint i don't know how or why or i don't know I don't know what I don't know why or how but it will kind of separate it and, and make give it like a spider webby type of look and it just kind of pulls it pulls away from each other it's some sort of reaction it does and it just gives it a different kind of look I don't know it's hard to explain but I'll, sh I'll show you guys up close uh, when we're done okay so uh, I'm done with this brush for now. I may come back to it. So what I'm going to do, what I always do with my brushes until I can get them in water, is I just take a, a cheap baby wipe. I spray it real good with vinegar water. And then I just wrap it up until I can get it either washed. Well, let's be honest, I don't wash it right away in a jar of water. And until I wash my brushes, I sprinkle just a tiny bit of white lightning in a jar of warm water and just let them soak a little bit. It makes it so much easier to clean. All right. Now, for the drawers or the door centers, what I did was I used peacock and cobalt blue, which putting them together, they look kind of weird, right? Turned out to be a pretty good color combination. I am going to switch brushes for these. This is starting to dry a little bit. Now, if I accidentally get my brush outside of the, the little trim here, I'm, it's fine. I don't care. I don't want this to be super perfect and super matchy matchy. I'm not trying to get, if you guys could see up close over there, you will, you'll definitely understand. Um, I, don't, I don't even care. We're just, we're having fun, we're playing. Where's my other brush? Here it is. All right, so I'm gonna grab a clean, 
flat mini. Wet it down. And if you guys have any questions and Dixie Belle can't get to them or I don't see them, y'all just be sure and tag me and I'll come back and answer them for you. The peacock is such a beautiful turquoise, such a pretty color. Okay, so we're going to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna spritz this just a little bit to wet it. So my paint goes a little bit further. All right, we're gonna get some peacock in here. You can see, yep, okay. I love boho. Boho, I always say, perfectly imperfect. If you mess up, you get outside the lines, nobody knows. <laughs> nobody knows because it's boho, right? You don't have to be perfect because I certainly am not. But it looks so stinking cool when you're done. Okay, we're just trying to um, get this center portion wet, get some wet paint on there so we can blend in a little bit of that cobalt blue. And again, if I get paint on the outside, I don't care, it's fine, because we're gonna go over it with some amethyst. Amethyst. Okay, I'm gonna set this brush to the side for a second. Now I'm gonna grab a um, I'm gonna grab a premium chip brush. Okay, a premium chip brush, and um, these are I think these were available last time I looked on the Dixieville website. Again, you guys can use that link to look or find a retailer. Your retailers might have some as well. Um, I'm gonna put about that much on there. I'm gonna mush it up. I'm gonna mush it up and then just drag it down. And I'm not trying to get a perfect smooth blend. I'm just trying to get it up in the crevices and then just swoosh it down. Of a glare right there. I'm gonna do the same here and go up. If you feel your um, brush start to drag a little bit, that means your paint is dry and you need to spritz. I hear my daughter playing on my door, so she may bust in here. And I'm doing the same with like, like I did with the honky tonk. I'm just dipping it into the into the lid. Okay, and I'm using a, just a tiny bit of pressure after I get up in the crevices and flipping Flicking my uh, paintbrush up, and then I'm going to come back to my peacock brush, and I'm just going to like that. Kind of feather it a little bit, and. missed and that's all she wrote for that this is going to be a little bit easier to tell as uh, what this what the uh, vinegar water does because it's more of a um, 
it's more of a difference in the in the color in the uh, color what am I trying to say they're not so close they're not so close in color in the color family okay so we're gonna let that set do its thing I can see it separating already I'll bring you guys in actually super quick and y'all can see what it's starting to do um, where's a good spot so oops, too close right here you can see that pulling away and separating a little bit thank you Teresa that's what the vinegar water does uh, let's see that's been a good shot there you go right there it just kind of separates it gives it a I don't know a different kind of look all right so the next thing I did was let me spray these down and get them wrapped up If you guys don't uh, keep your brushes wet and you let them sit, you'll have fun cleaning them later. Trust me. You will have fun. So let me get these wrapped up real quick. All right. Next thing I did was I took my, oh, you know what? You know what I forgot to do? I took my... I'm going back. I'm going back. I took my brush that I had the um, the ratio mix of vinegar and water is 50/50 that I use. That's my personal use. Some people don't use such a um, potent mixture, but that's what I use. Um, what I did also I forgot was I came back up here just to add a little bit of that color, and I just kind of eh, threw in like on the hardware. Is that what I did? Yep, I did. Just a little, little swooshes. Did I do it down here? Yep, I sure did. Look at me. I'm not even paying attention. That's really wet down there. I may have to do it here in a second. I just went over the hardware just a little bit. Okay. All right, now yeah, we're ready. All right, next thing I did was I went in with amethyst. I'm getting some drippies. This is gonna look so stinking cool. I'm getting some drippies, not too much. Not too much. I don't like a whole lot of drippies, but a little bit's okay. Can you do this on top of polyurethane or do you strip it first? Can you do this on top of poly or anything or use your first? So if you're going to paint on top of poly, um, I would just clean it really, really well with white lightning because um, that white, lin white lightning will dull it pretty well. If you feel like it's not dull enough, you can lightly sand it with, um, we have some, the Dixie Bell has some sanding sponges um, to get your paint to stick, um, but you should be good to go. You should be able to go in and paint over the poly with Dixie Belle paint. You can paint over pretty much anything. Ciao! From Italy. Okay. Amethyst. Really beautiful purple color. Purple. My favorite color, obviously. Okay. This is a French tip brush that Dixie Belle offers. Um, again, you can get those on the on the link there or through your local retailer now red and blue make purple right so I thought I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna come around these this little lip and kind of mesh and merge and you know if I get some of the blue and the red together it makes purple anyways so that's kind of where my thought process went I just put a little dabble do ya and I mush the thing together the little tip together and I just and I wasn't super um, sensitive or hyper aware of like where I'm putting it I just went so if I got messy on the edges and got some on the outside I was okay with that if I got some on the inside I was okay with that as well 
and then if it looked too perfect, I intentionally went on the outside and colored outside the lines because I don't want it to be too perfect. I hope somebody's in the market for a really boho buffet. This one I feel is gonna be one of my favorites. I just painted a buffet for my studio. It's super um, elegant and I needed something really colorful, really, really colorful in my life. I'm working on an entry, entry bench as well that's pretty much just one solid color, so I needed something really colorful. So this is a little too clean. It's a little too clean, so I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to throw some, throw some purple. Whoop. Made a mess, right? Made a mess, but that's okay. I want it. I don't want it to be perfect. I'm just going along the edges, merging, kind of uh, merging these colors together. There's some wood showing right there. Oh, guys, this this uh, vinegar is doing some beautiful things. Again, I am mushing like this. Hey there, Tammy. I'm mushing like this so I can stay on the edges of the trim here. Got some on this on the blue. It's okay. I'm not gonna not gonna stress. Not gonna stress. Got some on the red. Fine by me. So if you're just jumping on, we've used uh, Rusty Nail, we've used Honky Tonk Red, we've used Peacock, Cobalt Blue, lots of vinegar water, and now we're using Amethyst. We are blending and using all sorts of beautiful colors and going for a very very boho vibe here, obviously. Okay, so now I've got that. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna clean my brush off in random spots and blend in where it's a little bit wet in spots. So it's wet down here still. Clean my brush off almost dry brush, get some purple on that hardware. I am going to, so this has a pretty nice size drip right here and I'm afraid it's going to dry and have like a, almost like a little bubble at the end. Um, thank you, Dixie Belle. And so I'm just going to dab it with a wet baby wipe and just to avoid that because I don't want it to be. I want it to be somewhat smooth. I don't want there to be a huge um, lump. Does that make sense? Um, crackles of paint distressing more. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Let me blend this just a little tiny bit more. All right. So now the next thing that I did was I brought in my daisy. I'm sorry, I got something in my eye. 
That's something in my eye. Oh, I love what that vinegar is doing right there. I might not have sprayed it enough up here, actually. I don't really see it doing much, but that's okay. Um, we're gonna bring in the daisy and brighten it up just a little bit. But first, I am gonna shoot it with a heat gun just to dry it up a tad, because I don't want it to blend. You know what, I need more, I need more amethyst right there. I can see a little bit of the wood. Thank you, Miss Janet. Thank you, old friend. I can see a little bit of the wood right there. Let me fix that. It is super hot in here. The sun, when the sun sets, it hits my, um, it's starting to hit my wall back here. It gets hot. I think I got it all. I think, I think. I hope, I hope. Okay. I got it. All right, I'm gonna blast it with the heat gun real, real quick. And then we'll bring in that daisy. has done a boho piece before. I've done like 75. <laughs> I got a hashtag boho like J-Po. Boho like J-Po. I got shirts. <laughs> All right, let me blast this super quick. It's mainly just the edges. Oh, I love it. I love vinegar water. It does so Super cool things. Just wanted to get the edges really all right now I'm gonna take another another French tip thank you Terry I appreciate you I'm gonna take another French tip brush and we're gonna add a little bit of Daisy and brighten her up a little bit is it Daisy yeah it's Daisy we'll brighten her up a little bit and then I'll bring you guys in I'll show you what it's looking like and I'll let you go um, I wish I was there and you the color. I'm still very intimidated. Girl, no, just grab some and go. I promise. It's just paint. You can paint over it. If you don't like it, you just paint over it. It's so fun. It's so fun. I promise. All right, so I shook it up real well and I'm, I'm just dipping out of the lid. This is Daisy. It's a super, um, um, how can I? I don't know how. Yeah, there you go. Well, maybe. I don't know. It's yellow. <laughs> it's like a, it's like a daisy. It's like a daisy. Can you explain the vinegar to a few of us? Sure. So I mix my vinegar water is a is a um, it's a 50/50 mixture. So it's just white distilled vinegar water, 50/50, you know, half and half. Mine's pretty potent. A lot of you know, some people don't use quite a potent of mixture but what it does is um, it separates the paint I don't know how or why I don't know why it does it I don't know the chemical explanation behind it so please don't ask <laughs> um, but it just when you when you spritz it on there it just has some sort of reaction with the paint and it just kind of separates it and, and it kind of pulls it apart and it exposes kind of the under layer behind it and gives it just a really neat effect I mean that's just that's just all there is but when we're done I'm gonna bring you guys in and show you what we did what we did over here and then I'll bring you guys over there to the other side where it's completely completely dry it's been dry for several several hours and you can see that okay I'll, I'll do that for you guys but let's grab this Daisy let's get it on 
I'll show you both sides and then I'll let you guys go. I won't take up any more time. And it was like Sunday fun day for everybody. Um, the blue bristle. I'm mushing it again, the same. And we're, how do I do this over there? We're just gonna, we're gonna go sporadically. We're gonna go sporadically. If we don't hit it, hit every um, every part of it, we don't want to hit every part of it. Is what I'm trying to say. Another way, if you don't have any of these brushes, you know what you could use. Honestly, that would work just as fine, just as well as your finger. Um, that would work just as well. I have also done this type of style or technique, whatever you want to call it, with a palette knife or a putty knife. Just throwing some on there and just lightly scraping it across. So that could be an option for you if you don't have these French tips. Um, you could very, very carefully do it with a, you know, a, a flat mini or you know, any brush that you have, but it would be very, very difficult. But your finger, your finger definitely would, would be I mean, you could literally probably that much on your finger and just, let's find a good spot. Let's find a good spot, like, like that. You'll see, it's, it's, you could do that. Ah, let me wipe that off. Okay, so let's add, let's add some up here. What did I do over there? Oh, I did it on the drawer. Mm -hmm. I gotta, I gotta stand back also. Sometimes it's really hard to tell. So you stand back and look. You want it to be kind of equally balanced as far as color placement, but not like actual placement placement. Does that make sense? You don't want it to be heavy, heavy yellow on this side and not on that side, but I don't want it to be, I don't want it to match. I don't want to put it in the same spots. Any questions? Any, any questions? Oh, that dinner smells so good, y'all. Mm. We're having nachos. Hey there from Florida. And Maryland. Hey there. Hello, hello. All right. All right, let me let me go over the hardware randomly. And honestly, this brush is so fat on it and I don't want to get it it's it's kind of awkward to do this little tiny hardware. You could always use, you know, like a little artist brush or something. Um if I get it completely done and I want to add more on the hardware or I don't like it, I can do that. But yeah, I think that's good. All right, so let me show you guys. I'll bring it in. Y'all can see it's still a little wet down here um, where that vinegar water is kind of falling and settling. Um, and then I'll take you guys over to the other side and show you the completely dry side. The only thing I have left to do um, is faux distress and that's a little technique that I've done in my group 
for them. Let's see. Bring you guys in. Bring you guys in. Yay, Kathy, my girl, my kind of girl. Let's see. All right, so here's what we just did. We'll just pan down. Uh, Rusty Nail, Honky Tonk Red, Amethyst, Daisy, and then we've got uh, the same, and then we've added in uh, the uh, Peacock, the co Cobalt Blue, and let's find a good spot. Again, up here is where you can see that vinegar water kind of pooling and separating. And then we just pan down, it's still, still wet, still wet. And it's pulled, it's pulling down there. It's kind of pulled up. Um, but that's what that vinegar water does, guys. It, it pulls it apart. It pulls the paint apart. And so you can see where that cobalt is, but it's exposing the peacock, if that makes sense. Okay, and then I'll show you the finished kind of what it looks like. There's a glare on my phone. I can't really see, but um, over here, what it kind of what it looks like, completely dry, all the way down. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. All right, so I, again, I listed the colors there for you guys. If you need to, uh, hang on, baby. If you need to, um, if you want to, thank you, baby. I appreciate it. Just one second. I'm almost done. If you need to uh, find a local retailer, um, you can use that link. Or if you don't have a retailer, you can use the link to purchase the products, and it helps my small business, and I appreciate you so much. Um, I challenge you guys to get some color. Get, get some colors and just play. Just play in the paint, it's just paint, you can paint over it. Um, you can make an amazing... Yes, absolutely, absolutely. It's so fun to do, I challenge everybody to try it. And when you do, tag me in it, please, I would love to see. Uh, be sure and follow me over my Facebook page, I'll be working on this next week. I haven't de decided what I'm gonna do on the centers just yet. The sides, I think I'm gonna do just like the centers of the, of the doors, but anyways, Thanks for joining me. I appreciate y'all so much. I'll be over on the uh, World of Chalk Paint page Tuesday morning if y'all want to join me over there. Otherwise, I'll see y'all next time. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the World of Chalk Paint group. We're going to do the drawers today. Uh, I'm just kind of uh, winging it. I'm going to be quite honest with you. I'm kind of winging it. And... Uh, I've got all my brushes here ready to go. So, when you're blending Dixie Belle paint, you're going to need to use water. When you're blending paint in general, you need to use water and you need to keep your paint wet. I've got a continuous fine mist water bottle. Uh, this is Dixie Belle's. And uh, last time I looked, they were out of stock. They may be in stock, so you might, you might double check. You can use that link there to find a retailer or order the paints online and they'll ship right to your door. And when you use that link, it helps my small business, and I appreciate you so much. Um, I know the brushes were back in stock the other day, so if you've been waiting on brushes, go grab them. Um, and I've got this filled. I'm actually working with um, vinegar water today. Uh, you can use regular water. You can use vinegar water um, to do your blending. What the vinegar water does... My ratio is 50-50, so 50% white distilled vinegar water and 50%... I use RO water because my water out of the tap is kind of hard. It's a hard, uh, it's not very good. Um, what it does when you mist it on the on your paint, as it's wet and then it dries, it gives it kind of a crackly, distressed type of look. Just a, just a different kind of look. And that's what I'm gonna do today. So on the door, on the doors over here in this on these sections. What I did was I went in with uh, Rusty Nail and then I went over with Honky Tonk Red and kind of blended in a little bit here and there and then I just misted it with the vinegar water and just let it sit and let it do its thing. Over here, I think what I'm gonna do is the, the uh, Honky Tonk Red, I'm gonna go backwards, I'm gonna reverse it. 
brighten it up just a little bit and see what that does. I'm gonna switch it up just a little bit. So now that we've gone over what we're gonna do, kind of the plan, kind of what I think I'm gonna do, let's get started. Okay, let's get started. So, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry. <coughs> I'm sorry. I will try to keep that to a minimum. Um, Honky Tonk Red is a beautiful bright red. Beautiful bright red. Um, so I've got that. I'm gonna mist my brush just a little bit. Start with a damp brush. This is a flat mini. This is the, whoa. Whoa. This is a flat mini. This is my go-to brush that I use. Um, you can use any kind of brush, oval medium, oval large, for blending, whatever you're comfortable with. And I'm gonna go ahead and have my rusty nail ready to go as well. All right, here we go. Okay, so it doesn't matter that the base coat is rusty nail. This honky tonk is gonna cover it pretty well. So we're gonna go in and we're just gonna try this out on this top drawer to see how I like the look. And it's pretty bright next to the rusty nail, but that's okay because we're gonna blend in, like I said, some of the barn red. Oh no, I'm sorry, rusty nail. So we're just getting, let me miss this. We're just getting a little coat on here real quick, keeping the paint wet. You've got to keep the paint wet to keep it moving. Um, I am painting over the hardware. Typically, I don't paint over the hardware a lot of the times. I do take them off. Um, and to be quite honest with you, there was one little of these things that I could not get off. And so I was like, well, guess I'm painting over the hardware and put everything back on. It was on the very last drawer, the very last um, hardware thing. All right, so we're just getting this on super quick, keeping it wet. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing. Let me, let me bring you this way so my head doesn't get in the way. Sorry, guys. And so when I'm using the, when I'm done getting all my blending together, how I like it, I'm going to, like I said, I'm gonna spritz it with the vinegar water and I'm gonna let it sit and do its thing. If it drips, it drips, I don't care. If it has, I don't want it to drip and be super, super drippy, but I'm just gonna let the piece do what it wants to do. That's the beauty of boho painting is I always say it's perfectly imperfect. Um, you don't have to overthink it. Just You just take your paint and you go. On your second coat, you don't have to use a whole lot of paint. You save that paint, right guys? Okay, so we got a pretty good amount of paint on here. What I did on the other side is I took the, um, I'm flipping it. So the second color, I just dipped into my lid and I got about that much on my, I can't really tell, got that much on my bristles. I mean, I just barely dipped into the lid. And I came in and I just kind of randomly just threw this on. I, it is a very, very subtle, very subtle transition. Now here's where it's gonna get tricky in this little, this little thing here. I may have to dry brush some of the uh, rusty nail. You have to really kind of get close to see the uh, subtle transition here. So we're just gonna add a little bit of this rusty nail. We're not gonna be picky about where it goes. The only reason I have the top taped off is because I am going to stain it. I've already got it sanded down. So we want it a little bit brighter in the center. 
We're adding the rusty nail to tone it down just in a few spots. I am gonna have to dry brush a little bit to make it make that transition a little bit um, not so stark. And also, when you get your paint on here, and if you find if you find you don't like it, you can always paint over it. It's just paint, guys. It's just paint. So I'm just trying to find a, a happy boho -y look that, I, that I'm happy with. And it's hard to tell because there's a glare from the ring light. What I've done here. I'm going to add a little bit more honky tonk here. And down here as well. If you start to feel your paintbrush drag a little bit, that's when you know your paint's drying out. All right, so I'm just going to feather, feather it together where I added a little bit of that honky tonk. It's not a smooth, smooth blend. You can see little streaks, and I'm okay with that. I don't want it to be a super smooth blend. So now, I don't know if you probably can't tell, like I said, up, up close, there's a subtle difference. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lightly mist and um, I'm going to lightly mist and I'm going to let the vinegar water do its thing. So I'm just going to come across and get up there and I'm going to let it do its thing. Now hopefully what we have once this dries is, so the base coat is rusty nail. We added the honky tonk and then we added more rusty nail. Hopefully what we have at the end of the day when everything dries is you can see, you know, maybe in some areas more rusty nail over the honky tonk. Maybe here where we have more honky tonk, you see more of the rusty nail. Does that make sense? So that vinegar water is going to, uh, like I said, crackle and separate and give it kind of a weird looking distress type of look. So I'm, if I stand back and look, like I said, these sides right here, I'll probably have to come back in and kind of dry brush and do some layers of both of the reds to kind of make it mesh and blend together and give it some sort of cohesiveness. But also at the same time, I'm bringing in some dry brushing of the yellow, or I'm sorry, the daisy and the amethyst. And I'll probably bring a little bit of the cobalt and the peacock over into the center to kind of bring it in as well. So I think I like where that's going. I like that the center is a little bit brighter. I think I like that. Uh, it's very boho. I understand it's not for everybody, but I like, I like to show people what you can do with all sorts of different colors. Dixie Belle has an amazing selection of colors. And sometimes taking what does not, what you do not think will look together and just start playing with it, you get some of the best outcomes. You really do. So we'll go ahead and we'll do this second drawer. And then I think what we'll do, let me pull that down. And then I think what we'll do is maybe we'll shoot it with a heat gun. And then I'll come back in and I'll show you guys how I do the, um, just kind of the dry brushing. And we'll see kind of where it's going and how it's gonna look together with these two, these two, um, doors. Now notice I did not change brushes. So when I'm blending, I typically, typically don't change brushes because I feel like it helps the blending process and the colors are so close together and I'm using so little of the paint. I don't feel like it's going to contaminate my paint at all. And I'm just dipping into the, uh, the lids. Okay. So let's go back in with the honky tonk here. And we'll be careful with this little lip. Since we've already sprayed with vinegar. I'm not going to worry so much about these. Because I kind of feel like I know what I'm going to do there. To fix that.
Is anybody painting today? Anybody working on any projects, any boho projects? So my style is, um, I don't really like to put my style in a box. I can do really boho. I can do super classy and elegant. I can do farmhouse. I can do, I, I can do just about anything. And I can flip like a switch. <laughs> It's super fun. Um, I just play in the paint, and that's what I that's what I tell everybody. Just play in the paint. Um, so we got to keep this paint wet. So I'm gonna spritz it again. If I get a little bit on the side, I'm not concerned about it. I'm just trying to get the paint on here and keep it wet. So the hardware. If I have a little bit of the hardware showing, I'm not going to stress about it because I do come in, I am going to come in and do, I have a, a thing that I do, it's called uh, my faux distressing. Uh, so I'm not going to freak out about it. If a little bit of the natural hardware color shows, I'm not going to worry about it. This is a, you know, a boho -y, rustic, I don't even know how you would describe it, but that's just what it is. So if you get your paint on your piece, so let's just say I've done this, I finished my live, and I'm like, eh, maybe I don't like that so much. All you let it do is you completely dry, you let it dry, and you come back in and you repaint it. It's just paint. It's not permanent. Even if you've completely sealed your piece and you come back and you look at it and you're like, well, maybe I'm not so happy with it, you can still paint over it. You can still paint over it whether, no matter what top coat you've used, you can still fix it. I have done that so many times, it's almost embarrassing how many times I've repainted a piece. Okay, so we're good there. Now I'm dipping back into the, uh, I'm just using the lid of my rusty nail. And I'm going to come in and add it to the tops. I'm going to pick up my hardware and get it kind of in the center here. I had to use, I've had to use the lid now, or the jar. All right, so I'm going to pull it down. And sometimes I have found the best, some of my best work or pieces I feel have come when I've just sometimes I overthink um, they've come when I've just I've gone like so don't overthink what you're doing sometimes just uh, come in get a color palette slap it on there and then go from there let the piece speak to you um, I was talking with one of my best friends Malia Klein of Metro Tree Market right before we came live and I'm like I have no idea what I'm gonna do at the bottom um, I always have to, a lot of the times I have to get the body of the piece done before I decide what I'm going to do at the top and bef before, like the front of the piece done before I decide what I'm going to do with the sides. So again, it's just playing in the paint. Now my paint's starting to dry, I can feel it dragging. So I'm going to get this fixed right here. I'm just going to clean off my brush on the hardware there. And now, I'm going to smooth that out a little bit. Okay, now we're going to mist with the water bottle or the vinegar water. Not too, too much. All right, we're going to let it dry. Um, are there any questions? 
What did you spray on it from the can? So this, this is a uh, fine mist. It's a fine mist water bottle. So if you had a, I don't know, like an old Windex bottle that you're trying to use, it might not work so well uh, because it's not fine mist. But this is 50-50 white distilled vinegar water and water. My vinegar water mixture is very, very potent. A lot of people don't use so much. Um, but uh, thank you, Chris. Appreciate it. Thank you, Malia. Um, I use very potent uh, vinegar water mixture. That's what I'm spraying on there. Typically when I blend, I just use uh, water. But the vinegar water is going to give this a very crackled, distressed type of look as it dries. And since we're doing a distressed uh, boho -y look, I just wanted something kind of different, a, di a different kind of look on there. So that's why I busted out the, uh, the vinegar water on this project. So as this dries, I'm done with my brush. So what I do uh, on my brushes when I'm done, just to kind of a quick, quick tip. As I'm painting and I switch brushes, I'll take my brush and I'll wet it down with either water or vinegar water. Vinegar water is best because it pulls the paint from each other or kind of separates the paint. Spray it down real good and just uh, keep it in a either a baby wipe or a super wet paper towel, shop towel, and just set it to the side until I can get it into some water to brush it. Um, okay, so. I'm trying to see if there's any spots I can show you guys super quick before we move on to the next step. So let me switch this around. So let me see. You can see here where it's starting to dry a little bit. Let me find a good spot for you guys. Uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. Maybe right here, you guys can see, let me get it focused where it's separating just a little bit and kind of give it like, giving it a crackly effect. Oh, maybe from the side. It's still pretty wet. Um, maybe here's a better spot. Over here where I finished, over here. You guys can see right here where it's done that. It's very subtle, but it's super cool up close. So thank you, Kelly, I appreciate you. Let me, let me blast this with the heat gun. So we can do some dry brushing. Give me just a minute. This is actually doing really well down here. If you guys have any questions, if you're catching this on the replay and you have any questions, just tag me, uh, the Purple Cozy, and I'll come back in and I'll answer them for you guys. Um, you can always go to my page. I'd love it if you go to my page and give me a thumbs up. Um, my name is in the title of the video. I'm probably gonna go live this week and paint the paint the sides. I may do it today since I've already got all my live equipment out. Um, and I did, like I said, I painted the sides of this on the Dixie Bell main page Sunday. If you'd like to go catch that video and see that. This is crackling very well right here. So it just depends on how much vinegar you get in one spot. And also using your heat gun accelerates the process and gives you a different look as well. I'm 
I think that's good enough. I think that's good enough. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a French tip brush. Hey there, Erin. How are you today? I'm gonna take a French tip brush. Let's see. Let's add in some yellow. How about that? Yellow is a very contrasting color to the reds. So the next color is Daisy. So I did in the um, in the comment that I added, I added all of the colors on the piece or on the piece over here. I didn't know how much I would use in the center of the, of the uh, piece here. Because like I said, I really didn't have a complete plan, but let's add in some yellow. So when I dry brush, this is a, a synthetic brush. So I'm not gonna wet it because I'm gonna be dry brushing, but I'm gonna use very, very little paint. So what I'm gonna do, uh, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? I'm gonna dip and I'm gonna get like this much. I'm gonna get that much on my brush and I'm gonna smoosh it like that, okay? And I'm just gonna come in and I'm gonna randomly just bring it across and I'm not going to be picky and I'm going to do it until I have no more paint. I'm running out of paint. Okay, so I'm going to do the same. That much. Smoosh it. And we'll go here and here. I'm gonna pull this out so I can get some on the actual drawers. Nope, I'm gonna leave it in. If it gets on the side, it gets on the side. That's what I did over there. So let's go here and here. And let's go here. I want, I'm not paying attention to what I did on the side, however, so I don't want like, uh, I don't want to put an even amount of yellow that I did on that drawer to this drawer and then onto this drawer. I'm not trying to pay attention, however, when I stand back, I want to make sure the yellow is kind of balanced out and not, the placement is not exactly the same. Does that make sense? I'm not trying to mimic from one side to the next what I've done. I just want to make sure the colors are kind of evenly dispersed throughout the piece. I hope that makes sense. So I need to get some on the hardware here. And let's go right here. Now the hardware is super small, it's kind of tricky. I may have to come in with like a little artist brush and get it on there that way. Okay, let's see. It's kind of hard to tell when you've got a glare in your up close. When I stand back, I may decide to add a little bit more. So I'm trying to stand back as I go. And what I'm going to do also, so I've got my faux distressing over here, so I'm trying to leave the centers of the drawers alone because I'll add, you know, like a faux distress here and like over here, not too, too much, but just, you know, a big chunk, like where maybe somebody's like just scraped it against something um, and it looks naturally worn. So I think that's a good amount of yellow. What I'll do is I'll, I'll put my brush away. Now for these, watching you live, you're so silly, Erin. But you are my favorite today, just so you know. Um, for these, I will not wet, since it's a dry brush, I will not wet, but I will wrap it in a, um, a wet towel or a baby wipe, just to kind of keep that paint moist, because if you guys have painted long enough, or if you just started painting and you've made the mistake of leaving your paintbrush out, you know it's a nightmare if your paint dries on there. 
let's go in with some, uh, actually we're not going to do, we're not going to do the amethyst. Are we, you guys think we should bring the cobalt over? Hmm. Yeah, let's do some cobalt. Let's do some cobalt. I think that would be pretty. I'm, li I'm live. My son. Sorry about that. I hope that wasn't loud on the microphone. I need that sign. You know what? Aaron made me this um, <laughs> this this sign. It says Llama's live. Do not enter. And it's this like uh, face of me that he he caught me live. He did like a still shot. It's pretty funny. It's pretty hilarious. I need to put. I need to print that. All right. So I'm going to do the same with the cobalt. This is cobalt blue. It's a very very bright. Uh, I call it like an Air Force blue. Touch of amethyst or cobalt. Yeah, I think it's cobalt. Yeah, I think it's cobalt. All right, so let's add a little cobalt. Just a, just a tad. Just a tad. Uh, not too much. Not too, too much. And the reason I went away from the amethyst is because the amethyst, if you guys can see, uh, can you all see? The amethyst over here is not so much, I mean, it's a little bit of a dry brush, but it's almost a blend as well. It's a little bit more smoosh, like smooshed out. Does that make sense? It's dry brush, but it's almost blended at the same time. So let's add just a tad, I mean, just a tad bit of cobalt. Just a tad. Just to bring that color into the center. Yeah, and then we'll do the same with the peacock. How about that? We'll do the same with the peacock. Let me add just a little bit. This is this is my creative process, guys. If I don't like it, I can come back over it with the uh, the honky tonk or something. Yeah, that's good. I like it. All right, I'm just gonna wipe. I'm just gonna wipe my uh, wipe it off like that. Erin, remind me to print that thing that you made me off. Remind me to do that today. Lordy, <gasps> these kids are about to go back to school, so I should have this problem much longer. <laughs> All right, peacock. Peacock is a beautiful turquoise color. Beautiful turquoise color. I love it. And we'll do the same, and I'm using the same brush. It's, I use very, very little, and I just wiped the majority off on my little apron here. But we'll bring that peacock over ooh, into the center of the piece, and probably what I'll do, what are we looking like on time? What I'll do, I'll show you what I'll do to get this. So how I got this on the amethyst is I, when I went around the edges, here, my paintbrush was pretty saturated, and I didn't dip back into my paint. I just kind of cleaned my brush off, so it was really wet, and then it went to a dry brush type look. So I'll show you what I, what I will do to get that effect without having a super saturated brush. I'll show y'all what I'll do. All right, so let's just add a little bit of Peacock real quick, and then I will let y'all go about your day. All right, so let's add, let's add some Peacock here, just a tad. Just a tad. Uh, get that hardware. Uh, let's see. Swoosh, a swoosh, a swoosh. I don't want too much. Add some up here on this keyhole. Mm. Hardware, it's too much almost. Uh, get that top a little bit. Just a little bit. And we'll go right here. Okay, that's good. 
That's good. I don't want too, too much because I'm going to add, because what I'm going to do with the amethyst is really rub that in. Um, almost like a grunge type look. What brand of paints are those? Beautiful colors. These are Dixie Bell. These are Dixie Bell paints. No, you can't see. It's so bright. Uh, Dixie Bell. And I posted a, a link there for you guys if you'd like to try to. Who, if, have you all tried Dixie Bell? Dixie Bell is very user friendly. Uh, it's a chalk mineral paint, water based, no VOC. Um, I've been using Dixie Bell for a year and a half, and I probably will never go back to anything else. Um, and I've, I've used uh, three other chalk paints before, chalk type paints. All right, so what I'll do. Let me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna spritz this with vinegar water. I'm gonna clean it off really, really well. On my apron here, to where it basically gets it all off. You see how clean that vinegar water takes that? That's how it pretty much separates and takes that paint off. You see how well it cleaned it? So now what I'm gonna do with the amethyst to get almost, it's, it's almost like a grunge oh, type style. So what I'll do, since we're not really using a saturated brush, this is how I will do it. Okay, I'm gonna wet the brush pretty good. I'm gonna wet it pretty good, right? So it's pretty, it's pretty wet, you can, well, maybe you can't. My, my hand is pretty wet just because the bristles are so wet. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip it into the, into the lid. I got about that much. Okay. I'm going to dab it onto my, onto my uh, shop towel there. I'm getting most of it off, but my brush is pretty wet. All right. So now I'm going to come in and I'm just going to, almost like my brush was wet with the paint, and you guys can see there how it's almost doing the same as it did over here. Can you all see that? Yes, it's vinegar water. It's vinegar water. I could use regular water since I'm not really trying to get it to separate, but it will do pretty much the same thing. It's just wetting it. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing. Dipping it into the paint just a little bit. Taking my shop towel, dabbing it off. I'm going to come back in and do a little bit more until you get the desired look you want. So I really I'm just cleaning my brush off. Okay, So that's what I'm doing there to get the look that I got on the other side. And this might actually be a good transition right here. Now that I'm looking at it, that doesn't look so bad. So it's going from the, the um, what is it, Rusty Nail over to the Honky Tonk. That actually doesn't look bad at all. All right, so that's how you do that. If you're dabbing it off, dabbing it off. come over here to the other side and do the same thing and just just do it until your brush is dry that's how we're doing and you're, like I said you're almost like grunging like you're doing with wax You know what? And that's all I'm going to do. I'm not even going to make it symmetrical. I'm not even going to do that corner over there. I'm just going to leave it just like that. Okay? And that's all she wrote. I think that's all I'm going to do. And like I said, on the center of the drawer, so way it's not so blank, especially here where there's not like a little keyhole, I'm going to add my faux distressing in. And I taught that in my membership group, so I'm not going to do it live because that's not fair to them. They get all my tutorials first and they get them free. Um, I'll do that in the center of the drawer so it's not so blank and then that's good. I think I'm happy with that. Okay. That you guys, now that this is dry, you can see that very subtle difference between the honky tonk and the, um, 
the rusty nail. I like it. And I'll show y'all real quick, real quick. You guys see that crackle? That's what that vinegar water does. That's what that vinegar water does. It's a really subtle, cool effect. Okay. All right. Well, that was it. Thank you guys for joining. Uh, I appreciate you all. And I'll see you guys next.